Hey, this is Doc. Um, I just wanted to uh, do a little update. Some people have been asking about what specifically to put in their bug out bags or uh, um, to keep around the house for uh, m medical needs. Of course, that's my forte, so um, uh, if you don't know me by now, uh, I also go for as doghouse on, on the sites. And, uh, um, but they call me Doc, okay? All right, first thing I want to uh, get your attention is, and uh, men, you need to deal with this. Women, you already do, but I want to show you what this is, okay? This is very thin, as you can see, very thin, all right? And when it comes to, you don't have to buy those big, thick gauze packs or pot pads you can use stuff that's readily handleable and readily available around your house so I'm opening up this pack and um, you ladies are gonna know what this is you men if you don't know what it is you need to go back to sex education class okay but these things are great for wounds not just for what they're intended for and as you can see it turns out to this it's got wings it's got wings this is a, a pad but these are actually sterile and, and, and clean so um, they're great for putting on wounds so pressure wounds cuts major cuts it's also got sticky stuff to help stick it to areas where it needs to be stuck it's great for around arms all right, if you got any kind of a, a slice, it's great for putting pressure, and it's clean. You see, the biggest part of when it comes to medicine is uh, cleanliness, sterility, or cleanliness. The best you can make anyways. Uh, back in the 1700s, 1600s, 1500s, 1400s, they didn't uh, really understand um, sterility. Um, they didn't have the capabilities or the ability or the they didn't have the, the uh, Advantages we have today to oh, I got an infection I'll go to the doc get a prescription antibiotic boom boom being you know taken care of well if the SHTF or WROL occurs or when it does it's not if but when um, You're not going to have quick access to uh, um, Pharmacies or prescriptions okay unless you you're a hoarder of antibiotics uh, take a look at what you got in your house right now what do you have for antibiotic wise so preventive maintenance or preventive health care is what we have to look at and this is what I'm trying to teach you okay is the preventive way this is great for emergency use and it's, it's really compact when it's in its individual pack so in your bug out bag or in your bug in home make sure you have at least a couple packages of these and don't be shy buying them i'm 50 years old i give a crap about what i don't give a crap about what the people think i buy you know if they, if they think that uh, i'm using them meh, so what let them think what they want the next thing is, is, this is a very important, this is just, this is just simple stuff, people, but it's stuff that people don't think of. If you have a power outage, and what if you're, you know, we have an EMP from the sun or from something, and it knocks out the power. Well, it's not just going to knock out the power to your house, but it can knock out the power to the water supply. Okay, how do you think the water gets to your house? It doesn't just naturally flow. It's under pressure from pumps. Okay, and if they don't have back, if the, if the pumps run out, back up, or whatever, run out of water, you don't use drinking water to clean yourself. Okay, drinking water is for internal. It's for your, it's for your hydration. You have to have that in here. You don't use it for out here. Okay, so this is a simple solution. Are you ready for this? Now this is cucumber and green tea. I just want to tell you that ahead of time. Huggies. Refillable Huggies bag. There's 56 wet sheets in this, wet amps. 
Okay, and they're bigger than the ones you get at a barbecue restaurant. Trust me, I love barbecue, but those wet naps are just too little. These are nice and big, but this is Huggies. I've been watching the Red Green Show on YouTube, so I, I get a kick out of this. Huggies. All right, you don't have to get Huggies. You can get any brand. But don't get the hard plastic container. This will fit great in a bug out bag, and it will give you access at least to 20 to 30 days worth of cleaning and hygiene and, you know, risk of infections, okay? So remember that. These are great to have. If you don't have kids, you still need them. Let me show you why. Okay, they got a resealable cap. Dink, 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 dink. Resealable cap. So they'll stay wet. You take one, alright? At the end of the day, you wash your face with this wet nap. It's wet. The reason you wash your face, one is to clean it, but the other one is it refreshes you. And it actually, if you wash your face, you actually feel better because it opens the pores up. Because your face is one of the most porous areas in your body. And if the pores get clogged up with, uh, you know, sweating or I got oily skin, so oil and dirt, uh, your skin doesn't breathe that well. I mean, if the skin doesn't breathe that well, it can actually make you feel tired and bad. But when you wash your face, so for some miraculous reason, you feel refreshed. Okay? Now, when you're in the field, this is an easy way to do, okay? This can be used for multiple purposes, all right? But always start from the up down. Don't start from the down up. You'll understand when I go do this. All right, so it's a basic little wet wipe from, from a baby's bottom thing. Uh, you wash your face and your neck and, you know, around your ears. It's just to refresh your face and to open your pores back up so... So you can, so they breathe. Your skin actually breathes, believe it or not. If you were to totally cover yourself, uh, you could actually smother yourself to death with having, with being able to breathe in your mouth. If your skin is totally covered with stuff, you can It affects your 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 breathing because your your body actually breathes. Well, anyways, then armpits. Okay. Not on the shirt like I am, but on this. Now remember, this is just teaching you basic stuff. So you go from your face to your armpits. All right. If your face isn't that dirty, you can use this on your armpits. All right. The reason being is, if you're if you're uh, in the same clothes for three or four days, not only are you going to offend those that are around you, but you can also develop a rash under your arms. Those who's had rashes under their arms know what I'm talking about. Well. Bacteria loves warm, moist places, which mainly is under your arms and in your groin, your groin area, okay? So you'll develop a rash, and it, it, the more you scratch it, the more you're just spreading the, the bacteria, the infection. It's actually an infection is what it is. The rash is it's an irritation of the skin uh, due to friction, but also it is a bacteria too. That, it, that is just enjoying itself. So if at least every other day, use one of these. Okay, now after your armpits and your face is done, now you can set this off to the side and let it dry because once it's dry, or if you want to keep it moist, it's great for using on your backside. Uh, that's another thing people don't really... Uh, consider in their scenarios is they fail to remember that toilet paper goes quickly and it will be a hard commodity to get a hold of. Well, these are, these would be like gold, okay? Just a thought. Uh, nobody knows if, if, if you were in the Sandy or the Katrina hurricanes and you went several weeks without power and water and all that, uh, I can't wait till they come out with a documentary in order for us to be able to see what they went through because they went through hell. We haven't the faintest idea. We're still enjoying our luxuries of home. So anyways, then you grab a second napkin after you do your face and your armpits. All right, this has got bacteria on it. That's why I said let it dry. Then you can use it for wiping the back end if you need to. But you take, a, you take a second napkin and you wash your groin at least every other day. 
Because if, if you're in the same clothes and in the same underwear, some people wear underwear five, six days at a time, they only change them on Saturday night. Well, they're going to have, and, and everybody, I believe, has had some sort of groin rash at one time or another. It's hard to walk. It hurts. You scratch like a mad woman or a mad man, and it just makes it worse and it spreads worse because bacteria on your fingers, the next thing you know, you're getting infections, skin infections everywhere. Now remember, you don't have access to antibiotics, or if you're out of antibiotic cream, which I recommend you get also for your that you can buy over the counter, double antibiotic, triple antibiotic cream. You can get that at the pharmacies, get some tubes, don't be lax on it, get tubes for your bug out and your bug in scenarios. But you take the third rag at least every other day, the third wipe, and you wash your groin. Okay, wash your groin because bacteria loves moist, dark areas. All right, wash your groin. Nobody needs to see you walking around the house or around your campfire scratching like you've got uh, ants in your pants. Okay, and all you're doing is making it worse. And it's hard to, it's hard to go distances when your groin is actually itching and burning. Same thing with your feet, okay? Um, you, don't, you don't have to wash your feet every day, but what I do encourage you to do, and this is a doc just encouraging you to do it, all right, basic common sense, is if you're not walking anywhere around the march or if you're not having to travel, take your shoes off. Take your socks off. Let your feet breathe naturally. And let you because you don't want to get what they call jungle rot. You don't want you don't want to get infection in your feet because when your feet get infected, all right, you, it, it's hard to walk and it's hard to it's hard to heal because bacteria loves and fungus loves moist dark areas. Okay, so if you're tearing at your feet because they're they're burning and itching, and then you scratch your groin. And then you scratch your ear, and then you scratch your, your armpit. Guess what you're doing? You're spreading the bacteria all over again. So when you're not going anywhere, take your shoes off. Even if you're outside around the campfire, take your shoes off. Take your socks off, and at least change your socks. If you're gonna be if you're gonna be in a bug out scenario, and you're camping in the woods, change your socks. Socks at least every other day, okay? And do a rinse and just whatever, a lake, whatever, get, get them rinsed, and then just let them hang dry over by the fire, whatever. But always make sure uh, you, you take care of your hygiene, because hygiene, not only because of the people around you, but hygiene, if you stay physically in shape, hygienically, then you won't have to deal, that, that, that'll be less of a stress on you mentally is you'll be able to do your other physical needs without this kind of limitations. Okay, got those covered. All right, now, another thing, uh, uh, tampons. Okay, I know. Why? Why, Doc, do we need tampons? If you get a bullet hole, what we were taught in the field is if you get a bullet, if, if, you're, if you're triaging a dude in the field and he's got a bullet hole, we were trained to stick their finger in the bullet hole or stick our finger in the bullet hole. And that being, it would, it would help it, it would slow the bleeding, help clotting, and get them to a area where that could, they could be treated better. Well, I found out a long time ago the easiest and best thing to do is to just carry some tampons and what you do is you just shove it in the hole pull the cardboard off and that instantly plugs up that hole see that's just common sense and it'll save your life maybe or if you get poked or fall on something or you know any kind of hole if you don't have the ability to sew things up which most people aren't going to have the ability to sew things up. So this is fixes where you don't have to sew things up, okay? And that leads me to my final thing on this video is this. Super 
blue. Super glue. Okay? This is this. The, you need super glue. Crazy glue, super glue. I, I have trouble with these cameras trying to figure right, left, and left, right. They always go the opposite direction. But this works great when you're not able to sew something up. You see, that's what this is what this is for. Uh, you put it in your bug out bag. You put it in your. You make sure you have at least a bottle or two. I've had this for about eight months, and it's and I've used it quite a bit, and there's still plenty in there. But this and, and what I like about this style is the cap never plugs it up. Okay, it keeps it fresh, and these actually squeeze, so you can put a bead. All right. And what you do is you take your peroxide, and I went over peroxide. Most licensed doctors don't like you debreeding with peroxide. Well, the bubbling will get any junk out of there that happens to be in there, number one. All right. Number two, once you've cleaned it and you were able to dry it and stop the bleeding, then you pinch the skin together. All right, the cut, the wound, that's, you know, it doesn't have to be a deep wound for a, uh, whenever you break the skin, you risk infection. And that's what people in the early days died of, basic cuts. They didn't die of really, you know, there were plagues and major diseases, but most people who died in the 1700s, 1600s were from getting cut, and the cut gets infected because they didn't have a, a way to, prevent the infection from spreading or prevent the infection from starting and then it would turn around and boom it would get into the system and they'd end up dying like two weeks later just from a simple cut or a stab from uh, in the barn or whatever so you take the glue and you pinch the skin together and you put a little glue on it and you hold it there for about two minutes all right what happens is the glue seals the skin if the skin is sealed you have given it no time for bacteria to grow, so your body naturally will fight it. But you you got it you got it, you got it cleaned out, you got it squared away, and now you can seal it up. Now, sure, you can use band aids. You need a full box of band aids, not just all big band aids. You need a variety of band aids and some butterflies. Always use band aids. It's good to have, even if you when you super glue, band aid it over because you don't want to split open, okay? Band-Aids, good idea. Most people don't need, if you go to your cupboard right now, could you tell me how many, or can you tell me how many Band-Aids you have actually right on hand in your home right now? You need a full box of various sizes, and that's just for the simple stuff. You get a cut any time in the, in the field. I don't care where it is or what it is. You stop, you clean it, you Band-Aid it, or you clean it, you super glue it, and band aid it, so and then move on. Okay, that'll stop and prevent the risk of infection. And you can use your antibiotics for other stuff. All right, that's what I wanted to cover in this, and I'll cover some more as we go down the road. But this is necessity: super glue, bug out bag, super glue or crazy glue, stuff that dries in two minutes, real fast, fast drying. Elmer's glue takes hours. No Elmer's glue. Okay, super glue. Bug out bag, bug in. One or two bottles each. Bug out, bug in. Wet wipes, the refillable ones. They're easy. You can actually crumple them if you need tighter space in your bug out bag. Okay? They're great to do, great to use. And like I said, this is cucumber and green tea. You don't have to smell like baby powder, okay? Got that. I lost my pad. Pad. Okay. I always have some of these on hand and bug out and bug in. Not everybody's married. Not everybody has a woman that has access to these. So men, break down. Go get what you gotta get. Okay. Have your own. And tampons. Got it? Tampons. You don't have to leave them in a the box. You actually put them in your bug out bag loose individually or in your store in your med kit and they take up less space so take this stuff out of the boxes except for this you want these to stay moist so you don't don't take these out of the back you see this okay. 
they're flexible, work great. That's how you prevent infections. If you prevent infections, it's one less thing you got to worry about in your uh, SHTF scenario, okay? Everybody has accidents. Nobody here is 100% scratch proof or cut proof. If you think you are, you'll probably get a cut today. That's Murphy's Law. It happens. God bless you. This is Doc. I got your back or I got your six. All right. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.